Esme and thank you for joining me in my studio today. I'm a mixed media and pewter artist and I really love working with pewter or metal embossing as it's known uh, mostly in North America. When I do mixed media I always try and see where I can fit something pewter in there. So pewter is something that you do not need a lot of space for. You can do it with basic tools. I sometimes sit in front of the television on a tray and work providing the light there is enough light for that to do so why don't we get started and look at the basics that we're going to need so first of all the first thing we're going to need is a hard surface so the hard surface i'm using this mdf board which i find is very comfortable to work with secondly you are going to need a paper pad um, this is plain paper you can use recycled paper about three to four sheets that I just taped together in the corners I used to staple it but sometimes I scratch myself on the staple so I decided to go to tape and tape it together and then you're gonna need a thin mat to work on as well so you can just use any thin mat or you can also go to suede um, that is your preference. Sometimes I use the suede, sometimes I use the thin mat. It all depends on what I'm busy doing with. Of course, you're also going to need some um, pewter. So I'm going to be using this one in the example that we are going to do today for the three basic techniques. As for tools, um, I think one of your most important tools is a pencil you can come far with a pencil you know have other basic tools like a stylist or a teflon tip tool that you're going to need there is also a ball and cup tool so if you can see you have a little ball on the one side and a cup on the other side and i'll show you throughout how we're going to use that you have a refiner although you can also use your teflon tool tip as a refiner you don't necessarily have to use that um, you have the scratchy tool but that can come later if you do not have that and um, a paper stump uh, this is the paper stump that artists use for pastels anything it just comes in very 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 handy um, so today what we're going to do is I am going to show you the three basic techniques which is engraving or de-embossing, the second one is embossing and then the high relief. So we're going to start off by um, using, I've just cut these little shapes, two little hearts at different sizes. Just to show you, we also going to, I'm also going to show you how to write on um, pewter because on the pewter sheets because of course you have to know that you have to write on the front and then work it from the back because if you do it just from the back you might have the reverse from that so first things first the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, get our things ready So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little heart and I am going to place it roughly in the center of the um, piece of pewter oh, and I'm working on the front. So you have a back and you have a front. The best way to distinguish between the back and the front is you can't really see this, but when you come very close, um, there is small little dots on the back or little pinholes. It's not holes, it just looks like pinholes. That is um, indication that that is the back where it is a more smooth surface on the front. So when I place my um, heart more or less in the center, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pencil and I am literally going to trace that. And then you see you have your little heart that is there so now and i have done that on my paper surface the reason for that is just to make sure that that do transfer so from there i'm going to remove my paper and i'm going to go back onto my um, heart surface so this is my heart surface you can also use um, acrylic i also have an acrylic sheet that i use and what I've done is I've just taped my um, 
the two together my foam mat and my acrylic sheet it all depends i usually have multiple of each surface when i'm working um, handy so i'm going to go back onto my hard surface and then what i'm going to do is i am just going to retrace exactly on the shape that i've done i can also i could have left the stencil on there and trace that very important is if you do this you need to flatten your work because as you're applying the pressure it is going to give you that raise so you can just take your paper stump and um, you can wrap around it or if you do have a roller you can just give it a quick roll doesn't matter both of them work so the next thing is we're going to be going with engraving so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to write the word engraving on the side and because i'm writing on the front i can just write because it is the easiest way to do this so engraving so now you know that when you're going to be looking at your sample, that this is the engraving template that's there. And from here, I can decide lines, anything that I would like to do. So for simplicity, I'm just going to take a little a couple of lines through like that. I'm going to make a little bit of squiggles down this front here. And because it's a heart, I might just add another heart in there somewhere. Oh, that looks a little bit skew, but it's okay. It's still a heart. And um, I think from here, I'm going to do a little zigzag. You can plan this ahead, but also, you know, as you're going, sometimes I think we over plan. Um, so, yeah, I just go as... I see fit and I think this I would like to do these lines just repetition in a different direction so I'm just going to do that and I think I'm just going to add a little bit some dots in here with pewter um, especially the engraving you can go as well as what you want or you can go simplest simplistic it does not really matter it is whatever works for you we all have different styles so choose and stay with the style that you want so yeah i think i'm just going to do repetition of the circles again and just fold this up with some circles maybe just do a dot in each of them so there you can see my engraving is done i have that so when you look at the back you will also see that there is um you can it's visible from the back as well so that is the first one so the second technique that is there is the embossing so with embossing and i'm going to go back and use my same little heart that is there so i'm going to put it down again you can also use your stylus or your um teflon tool to trace you don't necessarily have to use a pencil it is just you know when you start out a pencil is always handy if you do not have all the tools i mean do not want to do this because you don't have all the tools you can find a substitute for all of them so i'm going to trace this now with my little teflon tool and again i'm working on the um, paper the paper surface or the paper pad and the reason for that is if you don't use that you might not see it on the back so when you look at this you can see it has transferred to the back there you see it has transferred so because now with engraving you have only worked on the front with embossing you are going to work both from on the back as well as on the front and that's why it is important for you to make sure that when you trace or when you um, draw your design that it does go through to the back that it's visible there so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to put the front side down and this is where i'm going to start going using my um, mat rather than my paper pad and just the reason for that is my foam mat is a little bit thicker than what the paper is it also have a little bit more gift so that's why i want to use that because now i'm going to do embossing so i actually want to raise that line 
So the same, I can either go back and I can reuse my stencil again and I can trace it or I can go freehand. It does not matter. It's nice when you have a stencil that. So all you're going to do is you're just going to go back in and you are going to retrace that line. So when I look at that line on the front, I see it is a very, very, very thin line. Now I'm going to go back onto my hard surface. So on my hard surface, I am going to, and this is now the back is on my hard surface and I'm going to be working on the front. So my hard surface, I'm going to take my paper stump and I'm just going to go around where I have made my mark on the outside as well as on the inside because I just want to have an embossed line. I do not want the whole heart to be raised. I only want to have the um, the line to be erased. And this is now where you can go in. This is another little Teflon tool um, that I'm using. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go just, just, just on the inside of that line and I'm going to refine it and I'm going to go on the just just on the outside of that line and refine it and it's always nice to work and turn your pewter sheet the way that it fits you to have a natural flow of your hand rather than trying to go all crooked with your hands and so I'm just going to go and refine that on the back so now you can see you have that little definition of that Again, I'm still on the hard surface. I'm going to go in and I am just going to flatten. But when I look at my debossing line, as I was going, I saw, oh, you know what, there I went a little bit um, too close to the side and I have erased that. So all you can do is you can just take it back. You have to be very careful when you do this because sometimes we overwork the pewter and we do not want to do this. At this point, I would not go back and use my stencil. I would absolutely just use my Teflon tool and very slowly I would go back in on that emboss line, re-emboss it, remove my mat, take my backside back down onto the hard surface i'm back on my hard surface whenever you do refining you have to make sure that you are on your hard surface and now i just come back in and i use my paper stump and i am pressing down so that the raise only my line is raised and now i'm going to go back in and i'm going to do the refining again and as i'm working I just keep on my eyes on there to make sure that I don't flatten the line again because I do not want to go and do this again. Sometimes these things do happen and um, that usually happens when we try to go too fast rather than slowing. It is the slower you work, I don't want to say at snail space, but when you work slower, you have more control over what you are doing. And again, I'm going to take my paper stamp and I'm just going to go in and I am going to flatten this. And now I have my raised line. So can you see the difference? This is all engraved where this has that definite line that is distinguished this. So if I would like to do um, another design in here, what I can do is I can again um, take my foam mat or even for that matter, if I don't want to go that deep, that raised or embossed, I can go back onto my paper pad and once I put that down, so now I have the front on the paper pad and I'm going to use my stylus and I'm just going to do the same squiggles um, that I did down the center of my emboss heart. I'm just going to do that same one, but I think I'm just going to do a bigger one and only one. So oh, that's a bit skew. So let's just do that to get it to the center there. So now once I have done that, I'm going to turn it around. So backside on the um, hard surface, I'm going to go in with my paper stamp 
and I am just going to flatten around it. So these are a little bit tricky because I have not allowed myself enough space, but there's ways to work around it. So again, I'm going to use my Teflon tool or my refiner, and I am just going to refine on both sides of this line. So you will notice that this one is not as outstanding as standing up as high um, or as embossed as what the outside of the heart is, just because we have used a different um, surface. So what I'm going to do is now, because I do not want it to be ray as raised as much as what the um, outline of the heart is, I'm just going to go back in and from the back on my hard surface, I am going to retrace this again. Again, if you want it to be the same height or the same emboss amount as what the, um, your heart, the outside is, you're more than welcome to do that. It's yours. It is, you know, it is really about your style, about what you like it to be in the end I always say you know you have to look at it so make sure that you are happy with what you are creating and again we're just going to go back in and we're just going to refine around it and there you go so that is our emboss heart So we have embossed the outside. You can see we have embossed the outside and we have embossed the squiggle that is in front there. So the next thing that we're going to do is the high relief. But before we do the high relief, I would like to talk about um, frames as well as just finishing off your items because once you do the high relief it is really difficult to go back in and to um, do all those kinds of things so what i'm doing going to do is i'm going to take a wheel and you have different wheels that you can use um, just to give it a nice little frame you can again you can work on your paper pad um, you can work from the front or you can work from the back. It does not matter. You can use a ruler. You don't have to use a ruler. You can absolutely do it freehand. I'm just going to go freehand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame this. So I'm going to go, I think for the top part. Oh no, I can do this. Um, so for the in, in, in engraving, I am going to do it from the back. So I have a little bit of definition there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my texture wheel and I'm going to go squish 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 you can do go in one line but I just find that you get so much better um, design when you do that get in the habit when you do that to do the parallels first so instead of going down rather go to the bottom now and now you are going to do exactly the same on the bottom and now you're going to turn it around and you are going to do the same from your sides. And again, it doesn't really matter whether you do it up or down or down or up. Sometimes it all depends how you're holding your hand. You can see a distinct pattern. And But again, it's all preference. It's your preference. So now I'm going to go back onto my hard surface and I'm just going to... Go around that. So whatever you do on the one side, you have to, I, I wouldn't say completely counteract, but yeah, you have to refine it or just finish it off on the opposite side. Just to neaten it so that you can have that absolute definition for that. Um, when you are, there you go. So now you can see. So you have your engraving there and then you have that little bit of a raise or an embossed frame around that. So I'm going to use exactly the same wheel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it from the front now. So I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do my squiggle, 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 squiggle. And I'm going to go squiggle, squiggle, squiggle at the bottom. I don't know if there's a really 
a word for that. I just make up my words as I'm going. Uh, And then you'll see the difference between um, doing it from using your texture wheels from the front towards the back. And um, so there you can see. Again, you know, is it necessary? Most probably not. I would usually just take my roller and I would just give it a quick roll. Um, don't be scared. You will not flatten your embossed or your raised areas. However, if you've done the high relief, you would have done that. So there you can see. And that one is erased, uh, erased, and this one is just engraved. So opposites with those ones. Um, if I want to write something that is embossed, so then you will have to write it on a hard surface. And I'm going to do the word love. So you are going to, sorry, excuse, not on a hard surface. It's going to be on a paper pad. And you're going to write the word love, L-O-V-E. And then you are going to turn it around on the paper pad so that you can actually see it. And that's why you have to do it on the paper pad and not. So there you can see I've written the word and on the back, I can see how to write it. If I've just written the word on the back, it would have been back ways and I will do it that way for you to see as well. So the next thing is I'm just going to take my um, stylus and I'm going to write the word love. I'm basically just retracing um, what I see at the back and I'm going a little bit into my frame because I didn't pay attention to um, spacing then I'm going to come in with my paper stub and I'm just going to flatten it the reason why we flatten it is just because it makes it a little bit easier to work with and again I'm just going to use the same tool and I'm going to refine front as well as the inside as well as the outside so basically all around each letter that I have created so there you can see now the word love is also um, embossed or stand out so let's go back in and let's say I haven't done it from the front if I only do it from the back this is what's going to happen so now I'm going to write the word love again L O V E, and when I turn it around there you can see what is happening it is written the wrong way around. Wait, let me define it and then you will see better. So now I'm also going to refine it. I'm just quickly going to go in with my paper stamp and then I'm going to go and refine all around it. And there you can see when you look at it there, the word is not, oh, the camera is making it right. But try it and you will see it is the wrong way around. So the next thing we're going to do is going to be high relief. So what I would suggest is when you do do high relief, you first have to decide on your border. So I'm going to place this down here and I'm just going to mark more or less where I would like to have my border to be because otherwise it is um, it might come in the way of my heart. So for this one, I think I am just going to use a um, what shall I use? I think I'm just going to use this little ball and cup tool because I haven't showed you this one. Um, no, actually, I'm not going to use it for a frame. I'm going to use it here. So you have your ball and cup tool. So what you're going to do, you're going to put it face down on your um, foam mat. And you're going to go in and you are just going to wiggle it. And you're going to go back in. And you're going to wiggle it and that is on the back because you want that um, ball to be raised. So now you're going to remove it. You're going to turn it around. So what we've done with the embossing when we did the heart, we actually took our stylus and we went on both sides. The nice thing about the cup 
the ball and cup tool is. The one side you have your little ball and on the other side you have your cup. So you are just going to push it down. And again, you are going to push it down. And there you can see you have two perfect little dots that you have there. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use another wheel that I have. And the wheels that I have, I have collected them over years. In the beginning, I basically have tried, I used um, the ones that you use for sewing and anything that I could get my hands on. And as I was progressing and really thinking this is what I like, I started buying um some of the tools that I know I was going to use a lot. So again, I'm going to do this one from the front on the paper surface. And I'm going to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it around. I'm still on my soft um, or my paper pad. And I'm going to do the bottom and the top from the back. So that again, you can see the difference. It's a little bit skew, but you know, it's art. It's handmade. That's how I feel about it. Oh, it almost looks like a stamp. So there you can see. These two are um, engraved because the, the down and then these two almost looks as though it's um, embossed because the little dots is standing out. So again, I'm going to go back onto my hard surface and I'm just going to give it a roll. I also just could have done this with my paper stump. And it would have flattened the surface. So back to our little heart. So we're gonna go back to our little heart and this is where it is slightly different from um, the rest of the two. The other two we have worked all the time. So now we're gonna see, we are going to trace it again. And I'm just gonna use the stylus. And I am going to trace my little heart. Okay, so now I'm still going to be on my paper stump or you can actually go onto a fin foam mat. It all depends how much you want it to be raised. So let's go with the little fin mat here, the foam mat. And now you're going to use your stylus and you are going to go on the inside lines as close to the edge as what you can get. And this is actually going to push it out. So you're going to go in and you are going to retrace that as close as what you can. And again, this, the slower you work, the better the result will be. Sometimes we're in a hurry, but yeah, no. So then, once we've done that, and I don't know if you can see from the side there, but you can see that it is raised already. Okay, yes, unfortunately the pewter is a very um, reflective material to work with. So again, I'm going to take my paper stump, and different from what we've done on the embossing, where we have used our paper stump on the inside as well as the outside, with um, high relief, we're only going to use it on the outside because we want the inside to be raised and again I'm going to take my stylus now and I am going to refine it and I'm only going to do that on the outside I'm not going to go to the inside so it's on the outside only and you can see the raised area that is there so when you look at that so if you decide that it's as raised as what you wanted, you can keep that. Personally, I would go back in and I would just refine it a little more. So I'm going to, again, use my paper stump and I'm going to start from the inside of the heart and I'm going to work in circular movements and I am going to push this heart out. So you have to be very careful here because you get to a point where you stretch your pewter or the metal too much and it doesn't work. Or you actually, it, it does work, but it breaks through. So yeah, I guess then it doesn't work. So just slow movements and you always try and work from the center outwards. Towards the side. And 
as you're going to go like this so you're going to go over that a couple of times then you're going to come back onto your hard surface and again with your paper stump you are going to flatten that area on the uh, around it you're going to go back into your stylus um, or your refiner and you are going to retrace it or refine it on the outside it's this is called a teflon tool it's also called a stylus it's also called a refiner it all depends um you know what you want to call it because if you use it for a refiner it's a refiner so there you go and now you can see you have your raised heart that you have there so this is the three basic techniques of metal embossing Usually when we work with the high relief, as you can see, there is quite an, uh, a cave, uh, concave area there. Um, we will fill it. I prefer using um, beeswax. So I have beeswax here that I would fill that before I adhere it to my substrate or a blank. But you can also use various different things um, depending on which country you use, you know, like the drywall compound or some people's putting the silicon in there. It, it all depends. For me personally, I prefer the beeswax with that. So yeah, and those are the three different techniques um, for metal embossing. Mm -hmm.